Okay. Well, here, here's the, the, the thing, Pat, with, with people and what they're being trained to do by the experts. People are training people who, who want a job to be job candidates. When you're a job candidate, you have a need. You need a paycheck. You need a job. And you're, you're memorizing thousands of pieces of advice and hoping, hoping, hoping that you get it right. So you walk in, your hands are folded across your, your lap, and, and you're hoping that you please your interviewer. You're answering the questions, and you're, you're trying to be a good boy or girl to get the job. That's not going to get you hired because everybody else is doing the same thing. You need to walk in not as a job candidate. You need to walk in as a solution because that company's not having the interview for fun. They're not doing it as a charitable exercise. They have a need. They're trying to do something. They have a problem. They're trying to expand. They're trying to find someone who can make something happen. So if you walk in as a solution and say, okay, I am aware of what's happening with your organization. I see you've done that. I know you've done that. You're trying to achieve this. I've achieved this in my career. Here's how I've done it. Here's where I've done it. And, and here's, here are the results. And I could do the same thing for you tomorrow. Hit, I can hit the ground running. Now, that's not just a game changer. That's a game ender. That job interviewer is going to think, why do I have to keep talking to people? This is the person I need. This is exactly what I'm looking for. They're okay. solving their problem. You are solving. That's the thing. You have to be a solution. So everyone else who comes in after you who's like this, that interviewer is thinking, okay, uh, I've got, I found my person. This is done. So it, differ it differentiates you from everybody. It's a totally different approach. And unfortunately, this is the approach that people are learning. When you go to these seminars, you're being expected to, to learn, here's how you stand, here's how you sit, here's how you smile, here's what you wear, here's your body position, I'm mirroring your body position, this is what I'm <laughs> supposed to do. But that's what everybody else is doing, and it's not presenting you as a solution. It's presenting you as one more person who's desperately needing something. And an interviewer doesn't need a needy person, they need a solution. Yeah, you have to make sure that you're not oozing desperation. No, <laughs> whatever that, you, you just do. give off that stench, I mean, sometimes literally. But um. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what, Rafe? The world is moving so fast, and especially if you're over 30, I would say at this point, um, you've got to believe that, hey, I don't want to come off as a dinosaur, um, but yet I have all this experience that I can pull from. How do you keep, I guess, from, from uh, getting fearful about whether you are still viable in the marketplace and what can you do to make sure that you show your strengths? Well, the worst thing that you can do is get in there and say, well, you know, back in the day when I was doing this, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. they don't care. They don't care. And there is some interesting interviewer shorthand to describe people who are over 40 and under 40. When they're being uh, asked by their colleagues, so how did the interview go? Well, he was uh, very relaxed. <laughs> that means you're over 40. Because... Yeah just there. You're not, you're not on fire. But if you're under 40, you're like, whoa, very energetic. That means that's what they are looking for. So you have to go in there looking as if you want the job. You have to go in there, not with some false confidence of looking in the mirror and saying, I'm the best, I'm number one, I'm going to get this job. No, when you walk in as a solution, you know what they need. And if you know what they need and you know you can deliver it, you have real confidence because it's based on like you were saying. Facts, data, reality, not some mist, some, some artificial uh, hype that, that, that isn't going to deliver what the company needs. So if you're over a certain age, oh, sorry, I just heard some dude talking to me. Um, but um, if, if you, regardless of your age, walk into that interview and you have the goods to back up what you're purporting to be able to deliver, that interviewer, regardless of how old you are, is going to have to take you very seriously. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I think you're right. Oh, oh when you're uh, unemployed, sometimes there can be, let me take my headphones off here, sometimes there can be almost a shame about the fact that you are not working. Uh, but I've read so many places, and it certainly seems like good advice to me, that you should let everybody know that you are, in fact, looking for a job because you never know uh, when the opening or whether a connection can be made. Uh, I know this isn't exactly what you're talking about in your book, but do you advise that you let people know, and well, how do you do that? I, I think it is. It's definitely important. But, you know, as opposed to um, other experts in the field <coughs> who are offering advice about interviews, I actually was unemployed. I was unemployed for a year and a half. Woo! So it wasn't just shame. It's anger. It's guilt, 
It's frustration. And then there are the physical embodiments of unemployment, uh, lack of sleep, inability to focus, lack of, 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 of hunger, um, irritability. So what these other folks are saying is, you know what? Don't worry about that. Memorize these 15,000 tips. <laughs> that'll, that'll be fine. But that, that, that is not appropriate advice. What my strategy allows you to do is to tamp down all of that stuff because it's not helpful. It's reality. I mean, you have to go through it, but at a certain point, the question becomes, what are you going to do about your situation? Your anger could be justified, but you should not feel guilty. You shouldn't, well, I mean, you're going to, but you shouldn't hold on to it too long because you're going to ask yourself, how could I let this happen to me? Uh, how could I not see this happening? What am I doing with my life? How did I get here? Or bitterness. So you see all these Absolutely. jerks who are yep. still employed, Probably. and you're thinking, w what? No, it's justified. But at a certain point, you have to say, okay, yeah. smack, smack. I've got to do something. I've got kids. I have a wife. I have to move forward. You have to go through that stage or whatever the seven stages of, yeah. of morning. You have to go through <laughs> it. But uh, there's going to come a point where uh, you have to throw some cold water on your face. Yeah. And my strategy allows you to work with a game plan, with a methodology. If you're just working on tips, you don't know where you're going, and you don't yeah. have any control. But when you know how you're going to get from point A to point B, you can focus on that. And now it's, it's almost like when, when Joe Girardi uh, was, was talking to, uh, to um, uh, I have to cut this out next, <laughs> I don't know his name. Um, well, anyway. Closer, the closer, dude. Rivera. Rivera, right. If he said to him, oh, you know what, just throw all the pitches you can, just throw them all, eventually you'll get somebody out. That's what the interview coaches are telling us to do. But he is giving him advice at, on his pitching. He's saying, okay, here's this guy's strength, yeah. here's this guy's yeah. weakness. That's a plan. That's a strategy. And that's what you have to follow. So when you are going through the shame and the guilt and the anger, in your back pocket, you have this plan that you're going to be able to, at a certain point, work on, and it's going to deliver the results you need. Well, I could talk to you for, for hours on end, but the last question, um, uh, when you're doing a follow-up, or you, you've had the great interview, and you're calling the guy back to see if they've made a decision, uh, you have a, a, an interesting way yes. to do the follow-up. Yeah, calling up and asking about decision, bad. Bad. <laughs> Just, yeah. There, there is a way to get the same result, but doing it in a way that makes you seem even more enticing. It's the cheesecake method. And uh, I learned this because I was looking for a job way back when, uh, when I was out of school, and uh, I had an interview, and then I was calling every week to see what was going on, if I was going to get the, 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 the job. And uh, the interviewer said, you know, you really shouldn't be calling me. You should be delivering me cheesecakes. And I thought, well, that's going to get a, a bit expensive. <laughs> He said, what I mean is, a cheesecake is sweet, it's irresistible, it's fresh. That's what you have to bring me. What else do you have going on? Do you have any information about yourself, of, of new things you're working on? Tell me that. Hey, I just uh, did so-and-so, and it's getting some Just won that Nobel Prize. Yeah, just won the Nobel Prize and the Oscar. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you might have read about me. But, mm -hmm. but in, when you're looking for a job, for instance, and I'll use the example of a, a video game developer. Let's say you're trying to get a job with a company to develop video games. Mm -hmm. The worst thing you could do is to call up or email and say, so, 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 did you make a decision? Is it me? Bad, because that's just irritating. He may not have gotten to it yet. So what you need to do is up your value as a solution. You send him an email. Hey, just so you know, check out this website. There's a review of a video game that I've been developing. Hey, by the way, check out this uh, chat room. Great buzz about this new video game. Just something I did in my spare yeah. time. You're not saying, are you going to hire me? But he knows that's what you want. But you're making yourself seem like so, so irresistible and sweet and delicious, like a cheesecake. You're delivering this great information. And at a certain point, he's going, or the interviewer is going to say, oh, okay, I give. You, you are the person. Well, I, what you're doing for fun, I want you doing for me. Well, Rafe, you're like a raspberry swirl cheesecake. To yes, me. with espresso. Give me the uh, book information and the website information to uh, sure. close out the interview, please. The name of the audio book is What's In It For Me, a powerful new interview strategy to get you hired in today's challenging economy. And it's the first and only, only book or audio book that talks about what's happening in this economy and how it relates to job interviews. You can go to my website, therehirementcoach.com. gives you all of the download information, and it's only $5.77. goes right into your iPod, and immediately your perspective and your skills will change like that.